So let's look at what happens when an object is on a ramp. Similar to any other problem, we want to draw our free body diagrams. Here we have gravity acting straight down. We still apply our uh, inclined plane concept here, where the angle here with respect to the y is equal to the angle of the ramp. And since the coefficient of friction is greater than zero, if this object were to slide down the ramp, it would act just like a block, right? So if the block is starting to slide down the ramp, friction would act back up. What a terrible free body diagram that is. All right, that looks better. <clears throat> All right, sorry for the edit there. I'm sure that you didn't see the, the first drawing, and it's better that you didn't. Um, Okay, so that frictional force is going to start the object to roll down the ramp uh, because the driving force here is the force of gravity, and the force of gravity is acting at the center of mass. So the uh, component of the gravitational force that's going along the ramp is that X component here, and again, acting at the center of mass. So therefore, the friction is going to be what creates the rotational motion. So when we have an object rolling down the ramp, we have a very similar type of solution than the yo-yo that I wanted to reference. <clears throat> now the process is the same. And again, the generic type of uh, solution is when you combine all the equations and you solve for either the angular or linear acceleration, it's usually the linear. Right. So if we go through this solution, you'll see that it's very similar uh, to the yo-yo. If we look at our forces that matter in the x direction, we have mg sine of theta minus the frictional force equals ma. And if we do the torques, We have friction acting at R, and that's I alpha. Okay, the friction for the torque equation is positive because that's going to start the rotational acceleration. It's negative for the um, translational because it's going to act opposite. It's going to kind of include that the same idea of the sliding block. And the solution being similar is we're going to make that substitution and then add the equations together. So mg sine theta, um, if I do this substitution here, you can see that the f's are going to cancel if you add them together and we get ma plus I A over R squared. An identical equation except for the mg sine theta. If we finish our manipulation, and that is for A, again, so we can factor out the A's, you end up with this um, plus I over r squared, do that little bit of algebra and we get basically, again, very similar to the yo-yo. All right, here's a yo-yo. And you can see the similarities. The difference, again, is the sine of theta. All right. Now, <clears throat> depending on what object is rolling, whether it's a sphere or a disc or a hoop, all right, this is going to change up a little bit, and I want to go through that. Okay, so tuck that away. Uh, what's going to happen is uh, if we do the eye of a disc, remember 
that's 1 half mr squared, and then we'll compare that to the hoop, which is just mr squared. We'll do the hoop first. All right. So in that equation, mg sine theta, we're just going to replace i with the mr squared. And you can see right on the bottom, the r squares cancel out. We get mg sine of theta all over m plus m, which is 2m, equals a. And the m's cancel. You get g sine theta over 2. Okay. Now, if we were to look at the rate of acceleration of just a block there, all right, we would just end up with A equals G sine theta. All right, so now, since some of that <coughs> energy has to go into the rotational motion when it's a hoop, we get that relationship. Now, if we use a disk instead, you can see that they're going to be, um, a comp there's a comparison there. Let's get that going. All right, so MG sine theta all over m plus one half m r squared. Right. R still cancel. All right, now we end up with one plus a half m. All right, so that's going to be 2 over 2 plus 1 over 2. And the m's cancel, so you have g sine theta all over 3 halves. And that equals the acceleration. All right. And again, you can always, you know, 2 thirds that. What might even be better than that one is just leaving, or actually dividing out the three halves, and you get 1.5 on the bottom. All right, so you can see uh, that the linear acceleration for the disk, which is actually easier to rotate, is going to be higher than what it's going to be for the hoop, which is more difficult to rotate. I want to take this one step further. I know this is a longer video than some. The common question is going to be, what is the speed at which it reaches the bottom of the ramp? Right. And we would have to know what the distance the object slides down the, down the ramp. Right. So we'll know the acceleration because we found that before. We know the object is starting at a speed of zero and the x displacement is x. Right. Simple kinematics equation. Now plugging in the a here g sine theta times x. All over the 1.5. All right. And that's supposed to be v squared. So we would square root everything. So that would be our final answer for the velocity. Now, there's a way to do that without going through the whole force problem and figuring out what the acceleration is. This is where we combine. Um, the rolling with the energy. So for this, for energy, we would need the height. Now, we already have the x distance. So when the object is starting out, it only has potential of mgh. However, the height is related to the length of the ramp and theta 
by x sine theta. And then at the end, it has both translational and rotational kinetic energy. And then if you watched the previous video, in order to handle this, we combine the omega squared with the v squared. Uh, it's similar to when we do forces, we combine the alpha with the a. So next line, nothing changes for the first two terms, but next one changes up a lot. Now we found right here, this is the acceleration for the disk, so we're going to use the disk again, where this is 1 half times i, which is 1 half m r squared, and then the omega is going to be v over r, but both of those are squared. And then we can start to see uh, the mass cancels. Right, these cancel. Nope, wrong thing. The R's cancel. And then we can combine what we have is GX sine of theta is 1 half V squared plus 1 fourth V squared. All right, this is 2 over 4. So we get 3 fourths v squared is equal to g x sine theta and solve it for v. It would be the square root of 4 g x sine theta over 3, where 4 over 3 is equal to 2 over 1.5, right? Divide 4 by 2, you get 2. Divide 3 by 2, you get 1.5. So you'll get the same exact answer whether you go uh, the forces route or the energy route. And finally, we have reached the end of this lecture video.